man approaches Miriam and forces her into his car, all while Miriam's boyfriend watches helplessly. This chilling footage shows the moment a 27-year-old bartender was kidnapped from outside her home. Her boyfriend witnessed the horrific ordeal and called 911. Oh my God. Bro, I just watched her get kidnapped from in front of my house. By the time the police found her, it was too late. Lord, this is somebody's baby. Okay, and please tell me why does she look dead? She gets face down, her face, her nostrils and mouth are directly into the ground. But what really happened to Miriam? Who kidnapped her and why? The details of this case are both shocking and disturbing. But before we get into that, let's go back to the very beginning and find out who Miriam was. Miriam Abdulrab was a 27-year-old popular bartender from Atlanta, Georgia. Her family described her as a bright light who was kind, gentle, and good. She loved animals and art and never had a bad word to say about anyone. Miriam also had lots of friends, and they all remember her as the life of the party. She brought light to every person she met, and everyone always looked forward to seeing her either at work or outside work. She was the kind of person that people were just drawn to. Miriam had worked at several bars around Atlanta, where she was loved by her colleagues and customers. James McConnell, who worked with Miriam at his bar, Mother Bar and Kitchen, for a few years, remembered her as the sweetest person he had ever met. She was kind to everyone, and that says a lot because in the service industry, everyone has a general wall up because you deal with a lot of disrespect. James also recalled how Miriam came to check in when his daughter was born. That speaks to the kind of person she was. She had a warm light to her. The owner of another bar called called Sister Luisa's Church of the Living Room and Ping Pong Emporium, where Miriam had worked for a while, also remembered her as a living jewel. At the time of this tragic incident, Miriam was working at Revy VR Bar in Midtown Atlanta and living with her boyfriend, Jerry Antone, an Atlanta-based rapper who goes by the stage name, Germ. On Friday, August 13th, 2021, at around 4.40 a.m., Miriam was seen leaving the parking lot of the bar after finishing her night shift. She had to drive about five miles to her boyfriend's place, but it was a route that she knew very well. Unfortunately, things would have a very different outcome this time. At around 5 a.m., police received a distressed call from Miriam's boyfriend, Jerry, reporting that he had just witnessed his girlfriend getting kidnapped. Hello, hey, I'm at 501 Borough Street, and somebody just, my girlfriend just got out of a car, and somebody just came and just kidnapped her and just left. Did they kidnap her and left? There's somebody just left with my girlfriend. Where are you, where are you looking? Oh my, I'm at 501 Burroughs, 501 Burroughs Street. Southeast? Yeah. So what, how did he, did she, did she, did she, was she snatched, was she? Bro, I, she just pulled up and then I heard somebody here earlier. Bro, what, oh my God, my car is blocked in, what the f Oh my God. Bro, I just watched her get kidnapped from in front of my house. Jerry sounded completely shocked as he explained to the dispatcher how everything happened. He said that Miriam had called him earlier to say she was almost home, and then he heard her car pull up followed by a commotion. When he peeked through the window, he saw a man holding a gun to his girlfriend and forcing her into the car. He described the kidnapper as wearing a security guard shirt and driving a black car that looked like a Ford Escape. Oh my. God. Jerry, I need you to listen to me very carefully. I need you to calm down as best you can. And I have a series of questions that I need to ask. All right, you said that you saw your girlfriend get kidnapped by the driver of a black SUV-style vehicle. Is that correct? Yes, it looked like a Ford Escape kind of car, like a small SUV. Because she, she just called me five minutes ago, and she said, well, I'm about to be here. And I heard her car pull up. Hold on, Jerry. And I hear a commotion out. I hear a commotion hold on, outside. Hold on, Jerry. Hold on, Jerry. Hold on. She had a gun pointed to her. Yes, I watched it all through my window in my front yard. He had a gun to her, and he forced her into a car. He had on a security shirt. Jerry said that he tried tracking Mariam's phone but it appeared she had either left it in her car or dropped it outside during the kidnapping. Shortly after the call, several police officers arrived at the scene to check for evidence that could help find Miriam. They knew they had to work fast because every minute that passed lowered the chances of finding the 27-year-old alive. In their investigation, police obtained surveillance footage that showed Miriam's movements that morning after leaving the bar. They saw that she had stopped at a gas station to fuel her car on 
her way home. Surveillance footage showed her pulling up to her boyfriend's home at around 5 a.m. Moments later, a car pulls up beside her and a man gets out. As Miriam heads to the house, the man approaches her and forces her into his car before speeding away. Everything happened in a matter of seconds, leaving no room for her boyfriend to intervene. Police believed that it was a random kidnapping and that the man had probably followed her home after he saw her at the gas station. The news of Miriam's kidnapping spread like wildfire, and her family and friends were understandably distraught by what had happened. They went to social media to ask for the public's help in finding her. One of her friends, Alicia Kim, wrote on Facebook, My best friend got kidnapped last night at her home in Grant Park. She's a bartender at Reverie and was a bartender at Mother in Church. If you've met her, you know she's an incredible human being. After her shift, she stopped by a gas station and someone followed her home, and as she was walking up to her door, she was taken. Please, if you saw her last night and have videos, send them my way. If you see her in any vehicle, call the authorities. At the time, everyone hoped that Miriam would be found alive and well. But sadly, their hopes would soon be crushed. As the police were still trying to figure out what had happened, they received two more phone calls from different people in the same area. The first call was from a woman who called in about an hour after Mariam was taken. She told the 911 operator that she heard four loud bangs, which she believed were gunshots. Then, four hours later, a man called in with some devastating information. I, I think I may need both police and ambulance. I'm walking by, I see a woman face down okay, near an abandoned it home. It's like, it's like oh. an abandoned home at the corner. I don't know the exact uh, address of it. It's near like um, an Exxon gas station and it's right across the street from, I think, the Boys and Girls Club. Okay, what's the phone? What's your name? My name is Robert Dixon. And, oh, Lord Jesus, I, walk, I see a Caucasian woman face down near a mailbox. Um, she is not moving. Okay, is she awake? No, not awake at all. I think is she breathing? I have not gotten that close to know. She does not appear to be breathing, though. Okay. I'm sending the paramedics to help you now. Stay on the line and I'll tell you exactly oh, yes, what to did. do Oh, Oh, my gosh. I see blood around her, upper body and arms. Lord, this is somebody's baby. Okay, and please tell me why does she look dead? She is face down, her face. Her nostrils and mouth are directly into the ground. The man, who identified himself as Robert, sounded completely distraught as he told the dispatcher that he was walking his dog when he saw a young woman lying face down on the ground outside an abandoned house on Lake Avenue, only two miles from her home. She didn't appear to be breathing, and there was blood around her upper body and arms. When police arrived to the scene, they confirmed everyone's worst fears. Uh, when we get to that scene, uh, we were able to uh, locate an individual, a female, uh, mid-20s, uh, deceased on scene. And what we now believe that that is the same female that was kidnapped from the 501 Burr Street. We are uh, been in constant contact with the victim's family, uh, and as you can imagine, this is extremely uh, difficult for them, and so we absolutely have to send our condolences to them. Miriam didn't have a chance. She suffered four fatal bullet wounds on various parts of her body. Miriam's friend, Alicia, shared the devastating news on Facebook, writing, Thank you for sharing. Miriam is no longer with us, and her body has been found. As this was going on, police on the other side of town were involved in a high-speed chase with a man driving a blue 2013 Chevrolet Equinox who had violated traffic rules and refused to stop when asked to. The chase ended after the driver crashed into another car. The driver and a passenger were taken to the hospital with injuries, and after receiving medical attention, the driver, who authorities said might be significantly involved in Miriam's death, was booked into Fulton County jail. They did not elaborate on how they were able to track down the man or link him to the crime. The news of Miriam's death shook not only her friends and family, but the entire community. People took to social media to pay their tributes and share their most memorable moments of her. My daughter was the most loving and peaceful person. She did not deserve this. Her brother Ali Abdurab said, Everyone who met her couldn't get enough of her. She made people feel better. It was just her thing. She did it without even thinking about it. Miriam's boyfriend posted cute pictures of them together on Instagram and wrote, Damn, today is a different feeling. I watched my real life best friend ripped away from me. I don't know what to do. Standing still, but I'll make sure they remember how selfless and happy you were. You didn't deserve this. 
Revy Barr also took to Instagram to mourn her death. Sharing a photo of Miriam, they wrote, Our hearts are truly broken at the loss of a dear friend and family member. Miriam brought light to every single person she came in contact with and will forever be missed. We will be closed this weekend to grieve and savor our last moments with her. Please stay safe. Over the weekend, a few of Miriam's friends made a beautiful mural of her face in her honor on one of the buildings in Atlanta. Above her image was her name and a halo. There were also messages around the painting left by several of her friends. One read, a super friend, a super person, a supernova. Another person wrote, you have been an angel. Someone else wrote, every moment spent with you was a blessing. People had also left bouquets underneath the mural. On Sunday, a vigil was held at the mural site with dozens of people coming together to remember the lovely bartender who brought light to everyone she met. Jerry shared a picture of the mural on Instagram writing, I love you, Merms. I always told your lil you were legendary. I don't know anybody that loved harder than you. You taught me real life lessons. Hashtag Miriam forever. Just to show you how much Miriam was loved, a GoFundMe page which was set up on behalf of her family to raise money for a funeral arrangement raised over $57,000, way above the target of 10,000. But the question on everyone's mind was why something so terrible had to happen to someone so kind and loving? Who was behind this heinous crime and what was their motive? He is now in the ambulance. Atlanta police identified 27-year-old Demarcus Brinkley as a person of interest. Police detained Brinkley after a chase in Griffin ended in a crash that hospitalized himself and another person. Police secured arrest warrants Sunday to charge Brinkley with murder, aggravated assault, kidnapping, false imprisonment, and felony weapons charges. Police have not said if Brinkley knew Abdulrah. So the person police believed was responsible for Miriam's kidnapping and murder was 27-year-old Demarcus Brinkley. But here's the thing. Demarcus was no stranger to the police. In fact, he had a long criminal record that dated back to his teenage years when he was arrested for stealing an iPod from a teacher at his school. In 2012, he was accused of hurting a seven-year-old girl. Then in 2013, he was found on top of a naked six-year-old girl. He pleaded guilty to multiple counts, including aggravated child molestation, cruelty to children, criminal attempt to commit and simple battery. During his sentencing hearing, his defense lawyer told the court that DeMarcus had a really tough childhood. He was one of 12 children in his family and had been abused by his stepfather as a child. He was removed from his mother's care by the Georgia Division of Family and Children's Services when he was just a teenager and placed into residential treatment programs for children with severe emotional and behavioral issues. He stopped going to school in the ninth grade. The defense lawyer also mentioned that he had been diagnosed with two mental health disorders and was taking three medications. The prosecution recommended that DeMarcus serves 15 years in prison, followed by 15 years on probation. But the judge ended up giving him eight years in prison and seven on probation. He also had to register as a sex offender. This is when offenders are usually assigned level one, level two, level three, depending on their risk for level of reoffense. Level one means they're a low risk for the offender to commit the crime again. Level two is when there's a moderate risk that the offender might do it again while level three, or a sexually dangerous predator, shows the offender is highly likely to repeat the crime. While some states level the predators on the day of sentencing, Georgia does it after the offender is released from prison. DeMarcus is clearly a dangerous predator, but for some reason when he was released on probation in November 2020, no one followed up to ensure that he undergoes a risk level assessment. Therefore, he went unmonitored until he kidnapped and killed Miriam. Atlanta police Monday did confirm officers in 2013 arrested Brinkley for child molestation. Court records show the victim was six years old and he was convicted, sentenced to seven years in prison and eight years on probation. State prison records show he finished serving his time in custody and was released last November. When sentenced, Brinkley told the judge he was on three medications and his defense attorney stated Brinkley had two mental health conditions. The judge recommended he serve his time in a state mental health facility. Mariam's devastated family believes that her death could have been prevented if DeMarcus had remained locked up. Her brother, Ali Abdurab, described the family's reaction when they heard about DeMarcus's violent history. We immediately thought, why is this guy out walking around freely in the first place? And we hear he has a job of working security. It's insane. It kind of hurts even more knowing this guy slipped through the cracks in our system. In response to this, the family reached out to Atlanta City Councilwoman Keisha Waits and proposed a law that would make it easier to identify and label 
sex offenders and track the most violent and frequent ones by having them carry labels on their IDs. The family hoped that this would prevent something like what happened to Miriam from happening to another person. We don't really want this to happen to anyone else. I saw how it's affecting our family and friends still. It's heartbreaking and no other family should have to go through that. We still miss her very much, um, but we've been doing our best to be around each other during these times. It, it kind of hurt even more knowing that this guy slipped through the cracks in our system. Ali is now um, working with Atlanta City Councilwoman Keisha Waits proposing Miriam's Law. The legislation would better identify and label offenders and track the most violent and frequent ones. Waits says to prevent cases like Miriam's, this measure has to pass. Ali doesn't want his sister's death to be in vain and hopes this legislation keeps her legacy alive. The family's efforts paid off as the bill was later passed by the Georgia General Assembly and signed into law by Governor Brian Kemp in May 2023. The Georgia Dangerous Sexual Predator Prevention Act, also known as Merriam's Law, requires offenders who have not received a risk level assessment to wear an ankle monitor. Once they are leveled, the most dangerous offenders must continue wearing the monitor throughout their probation period. While the lower level offenders could have the monitors removed if approved by the Department Community of Supervision. The new law also changed the name of the Sexual Offender Registration Review Board to Sexual Offender Wrist Review Board. Representative Stephen Sains, who was among those supporting the bill, later made a statement thanking Mariam's family and friends for helping make a law that would help Help protect the people of Georgia against predators like DeMarcus. I'm grateful to Miriam's family for turning their tragedy into a light that will prevent others from suffering. Since my first year in the legislature in 2018, I have been working on legislation to help ensure that dangerous predators don't have an opportunity to create more victims in Georgia. Miriam's family and friends brought smart policy ideas that aligned with the goal of increasing GPS monitoring for ex-offenders. Their support formed a larger coalition and made it harder for a small handful of special interest groups to argue against against the bill's merits. Merriam's tragic murder exemplifies the harsh reality of what perpetrators could unleash on Georgia victims. I hope to continue this partnership of safeguarding citizens from those who look to victimize our most vulnerable through some of the most egregious crimes. State Senator John Ambers also spoke about the new law, saying that it ensures that all dangerous predators are monitored for the rest of their lives. We need to make sure if someone is no longer in jail that they don't pose a threat to society. Without a doubt, Miriam is smiling down from heaven today. In reaction to this, Miriam's brother Ali said, Love always wins. The love Miriam left behind was a huge part of getting this law into place. It will be a big part of preventing future crimes like Miriam's from happening. I see it saving lives. There might be more Demarcus Brinkley's out there. Miriam's friend said that although it will not bring Miriam back, they can find closure in knowing that it would help someone else from meeting the same fate. I think it's a healthy means of bringing closure. I don't know if we'll all ever fully um, heal uh, from the wound that's left in our hearts from Miriam not being here, but um, I think it's the most proactive way that we can move forward. Um, nothing's gonna bring Miriam back, but what we do in the wake of her memory, I think as long as it's positive and it moves the needle forward, I think she'd be happy by that. DeMarcus was indicted on 15 charges, including kidnapping, aggravated assault, attempt to commit and murder. According to indictment documents, DeMarcus kidnapped Mariam from outside her home, drove her to Lakewood Avenue, and tried to force himself on her. When she resisted, he killed her. In November 2023, DeMarcus was offered a plea deal, and he took it, pleading guilty to murder, kidnapping, and attempted He was sentenced to life, plus five years in prison. And a man in, is now serving life behind bars for the kidnapping and killing of an Atlanta bartender. DeMarcus Brinkley negotiated a guilty plea in November in the death of Miriam Abdulrab. She was returning home, if you remember, from work in August of 2021 when she was kidnapped and found dead nearly an hour later. Brinkley, a registered offender, had been let out of prison less than a year before Abdulrab's death. The case spurred the passage of Miriam's law this year, which increases penalties for repeat sex offenders. Now, Miriam's family was not happy with this sentencing because it means that DeMarcus could still be released on parole after serving 30 years. This, of course, will depend on several factors, including his behavior in prison and the decision by the parole board, something that Miriam's family feels should not be the case. 
Ali Abdurab expressed his disappointment, saying, After all this time of waiting for trial, DeMarcus Brinkley decided to plead guilty for a sliver of hope that he may be granted parole one day after his life sentence is served. Miriam sounds like she was really an amazing person, and what happened to her is sad and tragic. I pray that her family and friends find peace and comfort in all of the memories they made while she was still alive.